with that, what particularly counts? Is it the permesso that they gave you from the state or your residency from the Kumu? The five years that no, you're No, with about. your residency. With mm, your residency. No, <laughs> yeah. Italy, your residence is very important. They want to be sure you are in a Kumu. That one is mm -hmm. very important for them. You understand mm -hmm. me? And mm -hmm. even before you go and apply for your permesso de sojourno, whether it's mm -hmm. one year, they want to give you two years, you must have a residence. Hi guys. Okay. okay. Hi. 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 Okay, guys. Today, you know what's happening. We have a guest on the channel, and she's going to go on ahead and introduce herself. But then, if you're new here, if this is the very first time you're coming onto my channel or you're bombing, like you know, into this video, uh, my name is Anne, and on here I do create videos around life and study in Italy. And I'm also a faith-based content creator. Okay, so if this looks to be content you're interested in, do consider subscribing to the channel. And, you know, thank you for doing that. So we are going to go on ahead. I guess is going to introduce yourself. And then we're going to roll on with a conversation. So please kindly introduce yourself. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. And I'm so excited <laughs> to finally be here. <laughs> right? Okay, guys. Um, my channel on YouTube is Odis TV. My name mm -hmm. is Uduwa. Mm -hmm. My content used to be about motherhood, but right now I'm doing content about Italy and um, mm -hmm. how to come to Italy, what's going mm -hmm. on in Italy, mm -hmm. studying in Italy, just mostly Italy, what's happening in Europe and how to mm -hmm. encourage um, Africans in Italy on uh, how mm -hmm. to live right here mm -hmm. in Europe. So that's basically it. <laughs> okay thank you for sharing that but then where where are you from where are you originally from we want to know that information okay oh okay 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 i'm originally from nigeria Edo okay. states yes mm -hmm. i'm from benin um i live in Italy with my family of course my husband and i have two children that are told us so that's that. <laughs> i'm a doctor by profession doctor of optometry although I am not practicing. <laughs> it's so good to know. Okay. Like you know, let's let's you know, let's keep rolling. Today we are basically going to talk about, you know, um citizenship in Italy and basically, you know, someone coming in, a student, even a students are coming in, someone coming in to Italy to work. You know, people want to find information, okay, what are the procedures here? How long will it take? Like, what are the routes and all of that? So we're going to discuss all about this in this video. And, you know, she's going to give us all the details that we need to, you know, to know. So first off, let's talk about permanent residency. When you, the moment you come into the country, what are the procedures, like, outline? How long will it take? For you to become a permanent resident in the country okay first of all it depends on the route you need to come in exactly. because most times when they give you a permanent resident one thing about mm -hmm. it they will always write the mode for which you are giving that particular document mm -hmm. if it is going to family to be reaching them or TV, and familiar, yeah. it's my marriage, it's going to be written there, it's school, it's going to be whatever, the labor, it's going to be written there. Yeah. So now, okay, let me use um family reunion first before I go into study. Family okay. reunion, your husband lives here, your wife lives here, your mother lives here, or your father lives here, or your child lives here. Mm -hmm. When they bring you in through the family reunion route, which is um, through the new application, and one mm -hmm. thing I think I have noticed of recent, all form of um, applying for permanent residency always go through the NULA OSTA route. You must require a NULA OSTA. Okay, you're yes, going to talk about that. Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when you eventually come in through the mm -hmm. family route, whatever document your spouse, who is bringing you in has, is what you will okay. get. Yes. Good. Mm, if your husband good. is a permanent resident, you will have a permanent resident. If your father, your mother, whatever the document that person is holding, yes. I was now say when I came in, my husband brought me and my son. Okay. 
My husband mm -hmm. is an is a permanent holder of the, the one that is zero zero. We call it a, a limitata. Although they okay. change it, that you have to renew it now every ten years. Ten years. So mm -hmm. they gave to my son. They gave it to okay. my son, but they did not give it to me. <laughs> which is because I am the wife, of course. <laughs> so then, okay, son, which is yes, yes. <laughs> So they gave me two years, but they okay. gave my son what the father had. So most time, the tie okay. between a father and a child is strong. Strong. Father and children is strong when it comes to documents. Same with a mother mm -hmm. and a child is strong. Okay. So mm -hmm. after the first two years they gave me, mm -hmm. I renewed again for another two years. Now before okay. they give me the permanent one, I have mm -hmm. to spend five years. Okay. Five years of residency in Italy before I get the permanent residency, which we call illimitata. Okay, 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 okay. So yes. with that, what particularly counts? Is it the permit that they gave you from the state or your residency from the commune? The five years that no, you're No, with about. your residency. With mm, your residency. <laughs> no, Italy, your residence is very important. They want to be sure you are in a commune. That one is mm -hmm. very important for them. You understand mm -hmm. me? And mm -hmm. even before you go and apply for your permit or this or journal, whether it's mm -hmm. one year, they want to give you two years, you must have a residence. Exactly. Yes, you must have a kata mm -hmm. and So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the first thing that you will do when you come into Italy, when you come to the family reunion, right, the first thing your spouse, they'll do something called hospitalita for you. Mm -hmm. Hospitalita. So, mm -hmm. meaning, oh, this person is in this house. Exactly. It is not mm -hmm. the same as a kata the resident. Okay. So, normally, okay. after eight days of your arrival, you are supposed to go to the commune, get mm -hmm. your hospitalita and then mm -hmm. you do application for your kata residence um, kata kata yes. yeah, yeah. then from there you go apply for your document at the prefectura and then they give you first mm. is two years but if for okay. the children they give them what their parents have that is it okay now okay. for the students of course mm -hmm. when you come in just every country you get a student permit when you come mm -hmm. in with your visa, the commune, if you're going to be resident in the commune where your university is, you will mm -hmm. go to the commune, okay, the municipality, mm -hmm. register yourself. Yeah, it's like you're announcing that, oh, I live here. Once you've gotten your apartment, if you're, not, if you're going to be resident in mm -hmm. an apartment, you uh -huh. get something from the, your landlord to the place, and then you tell them, okay, now you live here, and then they give you a card and the from then you proceed to apply, just you apply normally like everyone for your everyone. permit of stay. Now, the mm -hmm. permit of stay will be the number of years that your study is going to take. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. It's going to be the number of years that your study is going to take. So if your study is going to be two years, it's going to be two years. If your study yeah. is going to be um, one year, it's going to be one year. Meanwhile, okay. after you have finished your study, just like every country, you have um, a six months postgraduate stay. You have a one year postgraduate stay. So mm -hmm. during that stay, it enables you to look for a job. This is what okay. works for most, I think, most countries where you come as a student. So when you mm -hmm. get a job, so your student permit will now be reconverted to a work permit. Okay. So the mm -hmm. only way you can stay back in any country, be the UK, because a lot of us we like the UK, it is true work. We you okay. must get a job to stay back in that country after you have studied. Okay. So when you get the work permit, you now get a two years work permit, maybe based on the contract it gave to you. Yeah. After that, you okay. keep renewing. So your so your document is going to be based on lavoro, motivo di lavoro after your school has ended. Okay, okay, okay. But then the residence will still be running yes. even though you've so changed the motive. The, even though you've changed the motive. Yes, yes, the, your residence will still be. Yes, yes. So from okay. then, your 10 years starts running and then if you would like it, if you want to stay here with us, then you can apply after 10 right. years of continuous residency for your citizenship, just like every normal person. Person. Okay, okay, okay. So, yes. you know, regarding that, 
I want to ask, what if probably after the person, maybe the person entered, the person did a bachelor's, okay, bachelor's degree. So it's just like three years and then they are done and then they want to do master's or even the person came in for master's but then after they are done, they want to do maybe PhD. You know, they are still on the student's route. So that yes. one, how, is it the same thing? They're still going to mm -hmm. be a student because you're continuing mm -hmm. a student. And then it's very good yes. you clarified that because, like, a couple of people actually really think the moment you would land, the day you just don't land like that, you start calculating no. from there in five years. You just start calculating no. in five years. No. Five years. No. It's good. No, you're, you're on stud you are a student. You are a student. No. Okay, so now let us talk about with your spouse being here. If What if the, the person is not working? The spouse is not working, but the person is on a student permit, and then the person brings you over. That means they're also going to give you a permit um, related to what your your partner yes. has. What about your children so they, too? Yes, yes, they would have that. Yes, it's, uh, just like when the UK on is called dependency or something like that. Okay. It's going to be okay. something like that. But most mm. times, so what I want to say this is a very sincere note. Uh, Italy is a funner country. You, you see that coming to Italy with your family uh, is one kind like this. It's the one mm -hmm. that I'm sure of is when you come for PhD. That mm. one is sure. Mm. But, but you see the master's program. Allora, go, no, no, so, okay. mm. <laughs> they will even mm. tell you that. Uh, Yes, that you should try, you should apply, but it's not certain. So most times it is tied. I would encourage you if you want to come to master's. This is not a discovery. I encourage you to come to your master's. Always ask your university. Tell them, oh, I have a husband. I have a baby mm -hmm. of this. I have a mm -hmm. child. This age. So most mm -hmm. times your university can actually help you put okay. in. Okay. So you ask mm -hmm. the university. Also reach out to the embassy in your country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell them mm -hmm. because these are the two bodies. It is like the university is the ones bringing you in. The embassy exactly. is the ones you the visa. So it's mostly exactly. that they are not. The school is more like your sponsor. So if you get it mm -hmm. through with your university, they say, okay, no problem. Come in with your husband. Come in with your with your baby or come with your child. But ah, baby is fine. So in all, mm -hmm. I don't discourage people. You try and uh -huh. do that and come in with them. Reach out to your university. Your university most times they have all the answers to most of your questions when it comes to oh can i come with this person can i do this i've seen universities that even allow people to come in when they even pay just a bit of their school fees you understand mm, okay me? okay because okay. It's a, okay. we've already related with them we've talked to maybe your head of the department but however whatever you hear whatever you want to do always make sure you relate with your international body of your university you relate to the person who is a child of incoming student of your university. That is all. That is where you get first-hand information from mm -hmm. when it comes to coming with your family members and all of that. But if you yeah. have a, if you don't have a baby, I would advise you to come in first because Italy mm -hmm. has this system of um, um, most things we work with here is speed, and even the place uh -huh. you are going to apply for your new house that you to come with your family. Mm -hmm. If you don't live in Italy, it's going to be difficult to assess that portal. That is one thing I have mm -hmm. noticed. So, mm -hmm. if you come in, by the time you have your college fiscale, you can easily assess this portal. You can easily go to these offices and request mm -hmm. for this new yourself, or like someone doing it yourself. So, if it's possible, mm -hmm. you want to come with your family, fine. You can leave them behind first. You come in alone, mm -hmm. settle in at least, try and have a look you or what the country looks like. Then you mm -hmm. can move it. You can start going to the right spaces to be able to apply for Nola or to be able to bring your um family mm -hmm. um, in down okay. to okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much for um shedding light on that because I don't know. I've that's something I've really realized. Most of us do not ask the direct authorities the needed information. We rather we we'll rather ask someone else and then they say, they say, they say, it's among, you know, it's, it's something. But then it's this 
embassy, okay, this embassy that is in the visa and then the university that's bringing you over, they are the two authorities yeah. that you need to be in constant, you know, you need to be talking to them, asking them questions, yeah. constant communication with, because they are the ones that will give you first-hand information. At the end of the day, sometimes the person you might even be asking the information might be in a different region. And might not particularly know how things even work in the region where your university is located. <laughs> You have an international body, like a forum or like a group of international students under your school. Exactly. There's a chat, there's a room. Yes, I say that is where you should ask that questions. Go there, ask your classmates questions, get the head of maybe your the group or something. Those are the people you should be asking that question. Okay, so I think that's actually good. It's, it's good that we put that out there because that's not only a thing with like African students coming in, but then I think it's even a thing when you come out here. So many of us, we don't ask the people, like the authorities in charge here for authority, um, like, you know, for information. Right. Them say, them say, and then sometimes most of the things that you actually hear, um, like when you're in, sometimes they're not even, they turn out not to really be true in your situation. Probably the person mm -hmm. that, that gave mm -hmm. you the information, it might be true, but then it's based on their experience. Mm -hmm. And then here in Italy, no mm -hmm. two people have had the same experience. No two people have had the same experience. You can go, maybe someone can have yeah. an issue with maybe processing their permit or something, and then their experience mm -hmm. might be very different from yours. So yes. all the time, it's good. People are going to tell you about their experience. They're going to give you advice. They're going to tell you, like, you know. But then you have to realize that your experience might be different. And then we need to put that out there yeah. so that people know about that. So it's good you actually did mention that. Now let us talk about, you know, when you get the, you know, permanent residency after five years. What what does it cover? What how does it benefit you? Because I know country to country it's practically really different. That's based on the student's bro. Okay, permanent residence for everyone is the same. I have a permanent mm -hmm. residence, yeah, yeah. same whether I student that's exactly. the family president. Exactly. Now you keep mentioning five years. Five years is for those that come through and that has as look for people that has the refugee document passport, that has a US passport. Mm -hmm. That has it after oh, five years that can apply for citizenship. No, that can apply for citizenship after five years. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you have a permanent resident, even before you have permanent residence, if you're a student on a student permit, mm -hmm. you understand me, mm -hmm. you can assess health. Okay. Yes, you can. Thank God for me that the health system is uh, almost free compared to other mm -hmm. countries. Our countries, yeah, you can assess health when you have mm -hmm. the permanent residence of Italy. You can travel to all Europe countries mm -hmm. without a visa. You okay. can just jump mm -hmm. on the next flight to Germany, to Spain, to Greece, to uh, to where, however, yeah, where you want to go, Belgium, <laughs> Austria. Just wherever you want to go to, to European yeah. countries anyway, Schengen. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so that's it. That's I think that's that's one very great benefit. The fact that you can travel to Schengen countries. Can you, can you work America. there? Then, can you? Can okay, you work there? Now too? that's quite tricky.